Hi, welcome to ACS Composite. My name is Joseph, and today we're looking at spoiler options for your C7 Stingray. I have here the most popular spoiler option, which is standard equipment on a Z51, but the first mod usually non-Z51 owners will do. This is basically a Z51 spoiler. It's our part number 45-4-179. We stock it in carbon flash black, and this is a direct bolt-on to a base Stingray. So to install this on a vehicle, we do supply you a template. You do have to drill some holes. Uh, I know some companies have made a version with two-way tape. Uh, we always stick with hard fasteners just for safety reasons. It is a spoiler. It does generate some downforce, so mechanical fasteners are a must. To install this, uh, unfortunately, the bumper does have to come off. So this means that the, the whole clip, uh, there's about 30 to 50 fasteners, and you do need some help. Generally a four to five hour job in a shop, but still a very simple install that anybody could tackle at home. So this would be your first option. And then we have wicker options, which is uh, the next most popular thing on C7 Stingrays. We have here our 5.1 wicker. Uh, this one basically mirrors a stage one on a Z06. This is a bolt-on version. So for the Z51 spoiler cars, our most popular spoiler option are our 5.1 wicker systems. That's in two families. We have our bolt-on version and our smooth version. This is the original 5.1 wicker smooth version. You'll notice there's no visible bolts. There's a mounting flange. And we have here our matching uh, 45.4.117, which is our bolt-on version. You'll notice the holes to be bolted on and no mounting flange at the bottom. So this is the big difference. The overall dimensions are identical. So basically it comes down to whether you like or not the bolt-on system, and if you wanna tackle dismantling the rear fascia. Hands down, this is the most popular option. To install the 5.1 bolt-on wicker system, you do have to drill a series of holes into the main spoiler. And once the holes are drilled, you're gonna install some riv nuts. Riv nuts are basically collapsible nuts. And to install these, you're gonna need a riv nut tool, which is also available on the website. And the way riv nut tools work is basically you, you, you fasten on the riv nut itself, it gets bolted, and it's a collapsible system to squeeze it around the plastic. So you get a really hard, strong fastening point to it. R51 wicker system matches the Z51 spoiler shape. So you end up with a very snug, fit, and correct look. To install the original 5.1 wicker system, this does entail to remove the rear fascia off the car. And the reason being, because we install it via the same mounting points as the spoiler itself. So once the fascia is off, spoiler is off the car, this will basically slide on and get fastened by these points here. The big advantage here is that it is a reversible mod. There's no holes that have been drilled. So if ever you do want to go back to stock, it is possible. Some people do not like the bolt look. So this gives you a cleaner, smooth finish on the rear end. Uh, so basically these are the, the options between you know smooth and the bolt-on version as a customer preference most customers do opt for this one so in this video we're going to continue to install using um, the bolt-on version we're about to install our 5.1 wickers on this 2015 stingray this is a z51 car so it already has the z51 spoiler and that we're going with the bolt-on version which is the most popular layout it has the visible torque screws on the back end and the first step is just to do a dry fit, just to make sure we're happy with uh, what we got and what we're working with. And basically, uh, we try to line up so that the bottom of the spoiler is parallel with uh, the wicker. And we're somewhat pushing towards the center of the car because we want to tighten up the gap of the wicker extension or, or side end plate of it. We'll notice there's an adapter plate that covers the chambered spoiler. So, so this was obviously done intentional and it's a nice detail. So once I'm comfortable with where I want to position it, I'm going to start with the install. My first step is going to be to protect the surface. I use two inch masking tape, put it back on to where I'm happy, mark the holes, drill them the right, the right diameter, and then finally install riv nuts and bolt this on. So pretty straightforward. Uh, the install usually takes about an hour at home. Uh, you need a couple of tools, obviously a drill and most importantly, a riv nut tool. So we do sell that on the website, but you could pick one up at any uh, automotive shop. We're using M6 nuts, or, or riv nuts, I should say, which is the important thing to do. A lot of guys have quarter inch at home and those won't work. GM's using metric and, and that's what we do too. So uh, let's start. 
First step is to always protect the surface. So we're going to be drilling some surfaces using different tools. So it's always nice to put a little protective layer of masking tape on the surface itself. Next is to test fit the wicker itself. I'm also going to be using masking tape to hold uh, the wicker in place. An assistant is always great for this step or uh, masking tape. I'm going back, I'm going to reset it to exactly where it was earlier. And once I'm happy with it, Next is uh, the painful part, I guess, uh, the first hole on your Corvette. I'm using a 316 Pilot drill bit. Uh, again, uh, the panel thickness is about 1 8 or uh, at most a quarter inch, I think, right here. So I, I don't need to go all the way through, I'm just drilling it. I'm going to be centering it on the, the marked holes. The next step is to drill the nominal hole for our riv nut. So the way riv nuts work is um, they're a threaded insert and with the tool we're going to collapse them. So the most critical part of the job is really the hole diameter. You want to get this hole as small as possible. Our instruction call for a 10 millimeter drill bit or in a standard size because I don't have metric drill bits today. It's a 2564. So a, a visual way to check is just simply go with the riv nut itself and if I'm tangent or the same size, I know I'm doing a good job. So when you're drilling, you always keep your drill perpendicular to the surface so I'm turning with the car. Now that the holes are done, I could peel off my protective layer. So we're finally installing the riv nuts and a riv nut is basically a collapsible nut. So once this goes inside the body panel, it's going to get crushed. Here we have a riv nut tool, which is something that we offer you uh, through the website. And it's a metric tool. It's got uh, M3 up to M8, and there's actually extra ones. The one we supply in the kit are steel, while the ones in the kit are aluminum. One of my favorite tools in the garage, because you could fasten any body panel, whether it's sheet metal, aluminum, or composite, a rivnut tool will work great, and it lets you fasten things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. So when you don't have access to the backside, this is the solution. Uh, pretty much the same way, or the same type of fasteners, I did you find on a Z06 for the spoiler. So we're basically manually installing this. And the way a rivnut tool works is it's got a threaded insert, which is uh, counterclockwise threaded. And basically we're able to collapse it. So as you, you pull the lever, it's squashing it or, or compressing it around the panel. So one of the important things is to set it up. So you should be reading the instructions, but when you do fasten your rivnut to the tool, I had pre-installed the M6, you want to make sure the threads are, are passing the riv nut so that you get maximum thread engagement. And we've pre-drilled the right diameter. I already pre-tested it uh, for, the, for the height, so I want to be able to get a full collapse as I do. So I'm just going to do a dry run to show you. We do give you an extra riv nut in the tool also in case you screw it up. And basically now you can see it that it, it's basically squashed itself. It will compress the plastic or maybe a spoiler on the car. So, and then finally we, we could use this knob here to unscrew it. So I'm cheating now, but we're going to see this three times as I do this side anyway. So I'm taking a fresh riv nut, installing it, I'm passing where I have full engagement, installing the riv nut with the tool in the hole, 
And now compressing. And I want to get the maximum that I need. And finally, I could unbolt it manually using the little knob on the back side. And that's it. That's our first installation. I guess I didn't over tighten it at the beginning, but I always want the set nut to be at zero. I'm passing, slide it into the hole and compress. So another tip that sometimes I'll uh, tell customers on the phone, if they don't want to buy the tool, they're uncomfortable with the tool, you could basically set up the installation like I just did. And finally, go to a local body shop and get them to basically compress the nut for you using an industrial grade. So I'm going to do the last one with this one just so you see how it works. This is a super tool. It's several hundred dollars. Uh, I think it's worth every penny. If you're doing this once, probably not for you. But usually you could go through a body shop, bring in all the hardware, have the holes pre-drilled, and say, guys, do you mind compressing this? Give the guy $20 or $30 tip, and um, you'll know it'll be done with the big tool. And you're not going to break your head trying to figure that out, too. So those are options. But again, good tool to keep in the garage, a better tool to keep in the shop, and uh, we'll do the install. This one has a lot more leverage, so you have to be a little more careful than the hand one, because now I could play with the angle. So I, I really want to make sure I'm perpendicular to the surface, and finally compress. So a lot less effort, as you see. And finally, I pull the lever to unscrew it. So much quicker, a lot less effort, so my hands uh, could basically keep up with the work. So I'll be continuing with this one just because I'm lazy and uh, I'm so comfortable with this one. Rev nuts installed, the next step is installing the wickers. So I'm gonna prep the surface. Uh, basically, we wanna remove any contaminants like wax, so I'm basically using an alcohol wipe just to clean the surface and uh, potentially take out any uh, residual wax you may have as you detail the car. So we're going to final set the wicker onto the spoiler. We'll notice on the back side we, we have two-way tape which is pre-installed. That's why we did uh, the decontaminant wipe before. So I want to make sure that the top two-way tape, tape is folded to the top, the bottom to the bottom, and to the side just so it's easier to um, peel it. I'm setting it to the preset setting of earlier. I'm gonna hand install the, nut, the bolt. The hole of the wicker is much larger than the diameter of the bolt, so we do have another opportunity to fine tune the wicker onto the car. So this is the reason why basically I wanna hand tight. I don't wanna squeeze the wicker itself, I just wanna basically snug it. This is my last opportunity to take a final look to where the wicker is gonna be set. So I'm making sure that I'm parallel and uh, the wicker's exactly where I want it before I tighten up the bolts. I'm gonna peel the bottom two-way tape. Set it. Same with the top. Set it. And finally, the side. Set it. And I can now go back and tighten the three bolts. And give it a, a final snug. Perfect. The install's complete. We've completed the install, we did both sides. All that's left is really uh, take out all my fingerprints I've set on it. 
And the great thing about the 5.1, which is obviously mirroring the Z51 idea, is that they're not overpowering. And I know a lot of guys call asking to put the Z06 wickers on a Z51 spoiler, and um, it doesn't really work. The shape just doesn't match. Uh, so we'll show you some pictures that I've seen customers do. Uh, we absolutely refuse to sell them to a Stingray because we just know it's wrong. What you're doing is basically forcing a plastic part. It will hit the quarter panels right here, so we'll show you some pictures of it. And uh, eventually, usually it fails, simply because they're so big and uh, you don't have the right surface, so your fasteners are all at different angles and I've seen it happen more than once. So at the end, you end up scrapping your Z51 spoiler. If that's the route you want to go, then it's pretty simple. You buy our Z06 spoiler conversion for a Stingray. That requires to change the spoiler base, but this way you get the right base with the right fasteners and the right surface shape so that you could put on the stage two or three from the Z06 lineup onto your Stingray, which is actually something GM offered as an option, I think in 2016. We've basically bundled all the parts and um, we offer it to you as a conversion. Same mounting points, uh, the look is a lot more aggressive. I think overpowering on a, on a Stingray, so unless you have like a wide-bodied Stingray, it's not really something I recommend. But to each their own, if that's the look you're looking for, we'll put the product links to so you can check them out and, and do a comparison. The Z51 to me is perfectly balanced for the Stingray. You'll notice about three quarters of an inch taller. Doesn't inhibit the visibility without the bridge. And it's got a very elegant uh, side winglet. So um, side winglet really matches the lines of the car with the, the quarter panel and all that. And it, it's just a clean, conservative, uh, sporty look for it. And um, the install took me doing the video about 30 minutes. So at home, I usually tell customers half an hour per side, one hour. You should be able to do it. That's it. Enjoy the mod.